Ensure that the substructure has a 2% slope and is pitched away from the building for positive watershed. You can use a golf ball to test the slope. Inspect the structure from underneath to ensure joist spacing is decoded. Before you can install deck tech, you must have a solid substructure that meets all local building codes. Floor joists should be a maximum of 16 inches on center, and plywood should be a minimum 5/8 inch CDX exterior grade, tongue and groove. Decking should be glued and screwed, with screws to be a maximum 8 inches on center. Mark screw locations with a chalk line. Make sure screws are properly countersunk. Plane the perimeter of the deck to accept the drip edge flush with the decking. Thoroughly clean deck surface in preparation for installation. For proper application of deck patch, the surface must be smooth and free of any imperfections. Use deck patch two to eliminate all voids and cracks on the surface. Carefully mix deck patch according to the instructions on the package. Apply to all cracks, joins, and imperfections. Do not apply more than one quarter inch on the top of the drip edge metal. Do not fill screw holes in order to leave room for expansion contraction. Allow the deck patch to cure as per directions and sand smooth. Clean off any debris. Measure and mark 75 inches from the edge of the deck. This will allow for a one-inch overhang at the rim joist. Snap a chalk line. Cut and dry fit membrane. And carefully check for color consistency and imperfections. Roll the membrane piece back for adhesive application. If additional pieces must be placed, ensure that all pieces are rolled out in the same direction by checking the arrow markings on the back of the membrane. Deck tech preformed deck corners should be installed at all critical leak areas, such as deck wall intersects. Start by trimming off unwanted material from deck corners. Install at deck wall intersect and nail in place. Place deck clad drip edge over deck corner and secure to substructure using one and a half inch ring nails in a staggered pattern, approximately four inches on center. Join drip edge pieces, leaving a one eighth inch gap for expansion and contraction. Mark and cut corner pieces using a V notch.
Secure the remaining pieces with the recommended number of fasteners. Cut a 5 inch hole through the substrate. Center the drain in the hole and trace around the perimeter. Remove a 1 8 inch layer of plywood using a grinder and chisel. This will allow the drain to seat flush to the plywood. Apply a generous bead of construction adhesive to the underside of the flange and seat in hole. Secure the flange to the substrate two inches on center using suitable fasteners. Apply the membrane over the drain and using a utility knife, cut the membrane around the drain hole. Heat weld the membrane to flange and install the drain grate to finish. Use a hole saw to cut through the outer wall. Mark and remove deck material to accept the scupper flange flush. Install using construction adhesive and screws. Install membrane as usual. Ensure that no glue is applied to the heat weld area. Heat weld membrane to scupper. And trim excess membrane around outlet area. Apply WBA-100 adhesive onto a dry surface and spread using a 116 inch by 332nd inch V-notch trowel. Keep trowel at a slight angle to the surface and apply using a sweeping motion. Do not spread any adhesive onto the deck clad metal, deck corner flashings or any area that will receive membrane to be welded. When applied properly, the wood grain should still be visible through the glue. To apply SBA 100 solvent-based adhesive, ensure the surface is dry and free of debris and use a medium nap roller to apply adhesive. Coat the entire deck surface and allow to dry completely or flash off. Then apply a second coat of adhesive and again allow to dry completely remembering that areas to be welded later are not to receive any adhesive. When coating the membrane, mark weld areas and ensure that no adhesive is applied there. Wood surfaces coated with adhesive should feel dry to the touch and membrane coated surfaces should be stringy. membrane onto the adhesive. Roll up the other half of the membrane and apply adhesive. For multiple membrane pieces, measure two inches back onto the installed membrane and mark with a pencil. 
Add two inches to the new piece for overlap and a minimum of six inches to flash up the wall. Again, make sure all pieces are running in the same direction. Roll membrane back halfway and apply adhesive. Ensure the membrane is flush to the pencil lines. Repeat for the other half. Roll the membrane into adhesive and roll all bubbles out using a vinyl floor roller. Make sure to roll in both directions. Once the membrane is secured to the substrate, adhere the membrane flashing up the wall a minimum of six inches. Fold the membrane over and apply SBA solvent-based adhesive to the wall using a four inch solvent resistant brush. Be liberal with the adhesive on the wall to ensure good membrane to wall adhesion. Allow the wall application to completely dry. Coat the back of the membrane and allow the adhesive to become stringy to the touch. Once stringy, adhere the membrane to the wall and roll out all air bubbles and creases. Cut vertically at edge of sill and fold over. Crease at wall deck intersect. This will provide a clean visual break between the wall and the deck. If the walls are exposed and paper and siding will not be installed right away, use three inch foil tape to seal the top of the wall flashing closed to avoid water intrusion. Cut the membrane at the outside corner on a 45 degree angle and allow sheet to flop around the corner. This will leave a V space at the corner. Cut a six inch preformed deck flash to fit and round corners. Glue the membrane to wall and apply adhesive to the deck flash. Remember not to apply any adhesive to the weld areas. Place the corner flashing and weld as usual. Cut a six inch preformed deck flash in half. This will create a left and right patch for the sill. Round corners. Adhere as usual using SBA 100 solvent-based adhesive. Allow to become stringy and install. Weld remainder to membrane and repeat on the other side. DECTEC recommends 3-inch foil tape be used to both seal the open edges of the flashing as well as to protect against any non-compatible peel and stick tapes that may be placed into the door frame later. Bring the membrane up to the post and make a series of cuts and folds as shown.
round the corners on two pieces of post wrap and adhere to the post using SBA 100 solvent-based adhesive. Follow the installation instructions for solvent-based adhesive and remember not to apply adhesive to any weld areas. Heat weld the post wrap to itself and to the field membrane. This is where two walls meet to form a corner. Membrane is flashed up the walls and, once adhered, creates excess material in the corner, forming a triangle. Ensure the membrane is as tight as possible to the corner. Heat weld the inside of the pig's ear shut and make sure it's sealed. Fold the pig's ear over and heat weld it to the wall. Using the drip edge as a guide, carefully trim excess material with a sharp blade. Heat welding is a two-pass process. The first pass is a pre-weld to ensure watertight integrity deep into the seam. The finish weld seals the outer edge of the seam. Weld all seams. Weld all terminations. And weld all accessory flashing not yet completed. Check all seams with a round-edged probing tool. 